For limiting the current through inductor, I uh, took 1 kilo ohm because uh, the power loss is much lesser in that case and also my oscilloscope is able to measure uh, you know, rise time in the range of 100 nanoseconds, so it should be fine. And uh, right now I am measuring the actual value of this uh, 1 kilo ohms resistor to avoid any tolerance error. So, with uh, three, power, 3 volts I am getting about uh, 2.989 and similarly I will do a couple of measurement and by ohms law I will find the exact value of that resistance. And uh, these are uh, some of the measurements that I have taken and the resistance works out to be about uh, 1002 to 1003 ohms. Uh, with multimeter it is showing 995 uh, kilo ohms. Here I have my uh, induction cooked up coil and it is connected by a wire uh, all the way to this board. Uh, do not bother about the board, it just generates a square wave pulse of uh, 12 volts, that is what we are all bothered about. And this square wave pulse is fed uh, through this inductor, uh, that is this coil and then it comes to this resistor and we are measuring the, uh, the voltage across the resistor. Okay. Since uh, the voltage um, is entirely dropped in the resistor, this resistor is 1 kilo ohms as I said earlier and the resistance of this coil is very small. So, the entire voltage will, uh, the final, the steady state voltage will entirely drop across this particular resistor. So, uh, we are measuring the voltage across this resistor and the voltage that is generated from this uh, generator. Okay. All right, so let me start by generating the voltage. So you can see there are actually two waveform. Uh, right now it doesn't make any sense, but let me zoom the waveform and no, not in the amplitude, but in the time scale. Yeah. So uh, now you can see there are uh, two. Oh, let me turn off this light. It's better. So, there are uh, two separate waveform, one is the blue one which is the voltage and another is the, um, the, vol the yellow one is the, uh, is the current or the voltage uh, measured across the resistor. Okay. It is the drop across the resistor which is in term, it which is nothing but the current. So, few interesting things that we want to, uh, we, uh, we want to focus here. Uh, the first thing is that um, uh, this particular circuit, it is an LR circuit. So, it should have just um, a first order response. So, it should rise and it should go and stabilize, but we can see an overshoot. So, that overshoot uh, it keeps, it increases, you see I can make it lesser or higher. Uh, if I make the connecting wire uh, very close to each other, you see now it is less, but if I bring them closer there is a slight jump. That means there is an inductance, sorry, there is a capacitance which is added if I am bringing these two wires together. So, if I bring these two wires together, in, or, in addition to this L and R that we know in the circuit, there is also a C component and this L C causes a, uh, a ringing or a second order response which gives a slightly oscillatory behavior. So, right now we are not bothered about that, uh, we are only bothered about uh, this um, time uh, when the inductance is uh, just the parameter and the resistance, so it is L and R circuit. So, I am measuring the time across uh, from the starting point to where it goes and stabilizes and if you know the exponential rise uh, it is equal to 5 tau, okay. so 5 time constant is equal to when it goes and settles down almost. So, that time is almost equal to you can see it comes to about uh, 204 nanoseconds here. Okay. So, 204 nanoseconds when it is applied to when it is stabilized, the yellow waveform. Okay. Now, I have put, so this 204 nanoseconds, now I will put it in the, uh, in the Excel spreadsheet and let me find the value of the, uh, the inductance. Yes, so we have the value here. So, 5 tau is equal to 204 nanoseconds and so 1 tau is equal to divide by 5 and resistance is known as, um, as 
1 uh, kilo ohms and so the inductance works out to be 40.8 micro henry ok. So, uh, now we figured out that this particular coil which is the smaller one has uh, so you can roughly see the size. So, uh, this particular coil which has a uh, diameter of approximately 15.5 uh, millimeter uh, is about 40.8 micro henry. So, uh, the next test that I want to do is I have a vessel here uh, which has a base of uh, induction cooktop it says uh, you know uh, induction cooktop and all this thing. So, it is a heavy a steel base and it is meant to uh, run uh, with induction cooktop. So, I want to see how much is the inductance variation that happens when I place this vessel uh, on this coil. Okay. So, I am just uh, putting the, uh, the vessel on the coil and you can see. So, it uh, there is a change in the time. So, let us see. So, this is the place where the vessel is uh, uh, kept on the coil uh, basically and uh, let us measure the time. Yes, and uh, the time is about uh, 122 nanoseconds and that is strange because the inductance is basically reduced. So, uh, we feed the value here uh, 122 nanoseconds and it works out to be 24 micro henry when we put the vessel. So, when you put the vessel the inductance basically inductance of the coil basically reduces. Now, uh, what I have also done is I have removed this there was a uh, I think a thermistor or something here I do not need that. So, I have removed it. So, it is uh, it is a horizontal surface now and I can easily mount my uh, plate on top of it my vessel. So, as you can see uh, when I place the vessel there is significant change in the inductance. So, the inductance basically uh, reduces ok. So, let me do the calculation again when the plate is fully mounted on the on the coil. So, uh, this is the value I think we can say the value is about 92 nanoseconds and when I put the value here 92 nanoseconds it works out to be 18.4 micro henry. So, basically putting the vessel uh, reduces the inductance that is what it looks like on this coil. And by the way this coil is pretty uh, flimsy uh, in the sense it does not have varnish that is holding the coil together. So, it is mechanically very unstable I cannot uh, push it or do anything it, it starts coming out. All right. Uh, we have another induction uh, cooktop coil here. Um, this is the coil that I have, and uh, I do the same experiment. And on this coil, uh, it uh, it has an indu it has a um, five tau of about. Uh, 392 uh, nanoseconds. And when I feed the values here it works out to be an inductance of 78.4 uh, micro henry ok. And uh, again repeating the experiment with and without the vessel. So, when I put the vessel the inductance reduces here if I put the inductance reduces. And uh, the and the um, the settling time is uh, two hundred nanoseconds now. And uh, putting the value here two hundred nanosecond, it works out to an inductance of forty micro henry. That means when I put the vessel, it is forty micro henry. When it is without the vessel, it has a higher inductance about seventy eight uh, micro henry. Since we are done with our measurement, uh, it is time to do some more experiment. So, it is funny that uh, putting the hand also changes the value of the inductance. So, in this frame I can capture both the coil as well as the waveform. So, when I put my hand you see.
it basically changes the capacitance 